Hey guys, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel. And today, as promised in my last video, uh, I need to take care of the center uh, bezel that goes where the radio and the, the H HVAC controls. This is the only piece that I've got that I wasn't able to track down in the, in the and the texture finish. I could find some, in the, especially in the right-hand drive with the texture finish. However, they often have broken tabs and scratches and, and all that stuff. So it really, this is, other than not having the texture, mine's, and it does have a couple broken um, tabs, but you know, overall it's in decent shape. And plus I decided maybe some of you guys are like me and gonna have the same situation. So we're gonna try to repurpose this one. And worst case, I keep my eye out on the marketplaces and the, and the forums and find a good one that's textured. But we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this one cleaned up. Obviously, we've gotta disassemble it, get all the buttons and switches and all that stuff out. And like I said, I, I do have these two broken tabs on the bottom and I will try to make some new ones. Uh, these are some cutoffs from the rear bins. So we'll try to make a structural repair and get these tabs. Of course, this one has at least the indication where the, where the uh, hole goes. This one I can probably remake and then just not drill the hole in it until it's back in the car, then we can mark that. But I will go ahead and try to make some new tabs. As you can see, this thing is absolutely disgusting. It has fire extinguisher powder all over it, just like everything else has in the car. So I think the first step is gonna be go ahead and disassembling this. So I'll grab a screwdriver and we can get going. I have everything disassembled and um, you can't really take these plastic, I mean, I guess you could, but they're kind of glued in there. So by the time you tried to get all these, uh, I mean, they're they're quite loose, but I don't wanna, yeah, I don't wanna run the risk of damaging anything. Yeah, so I'm just gonna leave those alone. I'm not gonna try to pull those out. I'll try a couple things and see what works best trying to get this old finish off. Obviously acetone and you know things like that would eat that away, but you might damage the plastic some sanding. So I'll try a few different things and see what works best for me. I'll have to be kind of careful not to do any damage to any of this, uh, any of these labels or any of this plastic that we're going to leave in place. This is the control for the light, the, uh, the, the dimmer, and it looks like one of my tabs is broken off. So I'm not sure how or what I can do to fix that. Uh, it seemed to be holding in there pretty well with the tab broken, but I'll, I'll have to check that out. And of course, all the controls and the gauges and everything in here is just super, super, super dirty. You know, go ahead and check all these lights. I'll probably go ahead and replace them. Seems like just about everything in here needs a light. So I do have a bunch of new bulbs. So I can go ahead and swap all that out. But for now, I'm going to focus on getting all this cleaned up. And I'll check back in once I've got that done. My wheel that turned my dimmer, uh, you could just feel the grime and the grit in there. So I decided to take it completely apart and rinse it out and make sure I got all the debris out and it just it had tons of fire extinguisher powder in it. So definitely took some time to try to clean as much of that out as I could. I may look to see about replacing that in the future. The part that um, you know covers that, you can just wiggle that off. And then this whole thing just pulls out if you ever have to do that. So I'm letting that kind of air dry a little bit longer before I put it back together. And these wires and everything came out of, um, you know, essentially the housing that has all the gauges and everything just needed to be cleaned. There was just so much dirt and crap inside there that I just decided to take it completely apart. I did label all the lights and things uh, before I took them out so that I didn't get those lost. And it looks like I'm gonna need one, two, three, four of these kind of like mini bulbs. And then I'm gonna need one, two, three, uh, four of I think they're Neo 3.5 bulbs, um, and I'll show you more about that when I, I swap those out. It looks like I finally have everything cleaned, compressed air, toothbrushes, and little 
kind of wire brushes or whatever, all that stuff just wiggling through there and anything I could put in the sink and rinse out, I did do that and, and just to get those all flushed clean. So other than replacing the bulbs and getting this uh, dimmer switch reassembled, this can all go back together. But for now, let me grab the, uh, the new replacement bulbs and show you what I got for those. I don't think I have ever driven the car in the dark, so I wouldn't even know if these lights are burned out or not. I went to superbrightleds.com and just picked up a big order of light bulbs. I mean, I, I definitely got one of each that I needed, plus I got a few different in different colors and different temperatures and all kinds of things. So in the RX-7's dash, you're gonna have like three different bulbs for the most part that kind of go to all the various things in the car. So probably the most common and, and maybe like it's like a, you know, it's a little bit bigger um, bulb is this, it's it's called a 194 bulb and that's that's gonna be your bigger bulbs for like the dash um, and you know, the, the map lights and things like that. So I picked up several cool white um, 194 bulbs. The second and probably actually really the one you're gonna have need the, mo the most of is these 74 size bulbs. They're the kind of the small ones. These are gonna be all through the gauge cluster. They're gonna be all through this aircon um, dash and controls, and they're going to be in other little places throughout the dash. So the 74 size bulb is a much smaller bulb. I picked up various colors of the 74 size, mostly white, some blue, some red, and a couple greens, because throughout this and the, the gauge cluster, there's going to be lots of different size bulbs. White would work everywhere, but if you have like the high beam, for example, you get a better effect putting a blue bulb with a blue screen on that indicator. And to put this back together, a lot of these little tiny buttons that have lights, they use a Neo 3 bulb. And again, most of these I could just go back with white. I don't necessarily recall what the color of some of these are. Um, you know, like this one for the hazard, it might make sense to put a red in there just because it'll make the red shine brighter. Or maybe in the air conditioning um, button, it makes sense to put in a blue. Now you can pop some of these buttons off, hold them up to the light and see what kind of color the screen is if you don't remember what it looks like while it's in the car. I'll go ahead and swap out these bulbs with the LEDs and get all this reassembled. I've dimmed the lights real quick just to show you what I was talking about taking a flashlight. So this is a flashlight that just has a bright white LED light. And for example, this is uh, the fan control knob. And if you put that light up to that, um, hopefully you can see that pretty well in the camera. But this one actually has a red and yellow. So this one, I probably just want to go ahead and put a white light bulb in it because it's got two colors. And then I'm not exactly sure where this one goes, but you can see, um, hopefully in the camera, that that has a red light. So, you know, this could be one that we would want to put a red light in. You'll have to kind of play around with some of these as you do them and figure out which color combinations are going to work for you. I did go ahead and pull out um, some blue, red, and white of the little Neo 3 bulbs, and then all the all the 74 size bulbs that go in the back of the housing. I just got cool white for all those. When you get your light bulbs from super bright LEDs, they basically come individually packaged or maybe some of them come in a pack. They'll have a sticker on them that basically tells you what they are. So it's Neo 3, um, got the view angle, the color. So these are 120 degrees, which isn't great because a lot of these go in and will be 90 degrees to whatever the wherever the light needs to shine. So in hindsight, maybe these aren't the best you know, putting in LEDs for these are not the best, but um, it was easy enough to go ahead and order them while I was ordering everything else. So we'll try them out. And if I don't like them, I can always replace them, but I think they'll be bright enough that they'll shine through the buttons. I'll go ahead and get these open and put them in where they need to go. I really don't think it would hurt anything, but I did go ahead and put some rubber gloves on just so that I'm not transferring any oils from my fingers or anything onto the bulbs or the LEDs. The 74 style, that's pretty simple. These will basically just pull straight out and then you can take one of the LED bulbs and pop them um, basically right back in. Might be a little bit of a snug fit just from these sitting in the car. You know, these are, you know, glass bulbs with the wire on them. These are gonna be a little bit of a tight fit just because of the trying to fit them down in there. So they'll just sit down in there. So those will be easy to swap out. For the Neo 3 bulbs, basically you're gonna need a you know, screwdriver and you'll wanna go around and basically turn, you know, roughly 90 degrees and then you should be able to pull 
the old bulb out. Um, they can be a little bit stubborn. You might have to twist them back and forth as you're pulling them out. And so, you know, this one, I'm assuming when it was in the car, that put off a red light, which this is for the, um, the, the hazard button. So I think I'll go ahead and put in one of my red Neo 3s in the place of this one. And again, this is just gonna emit a light directly out the end of the bulb. It says 120 degree spread. And because this is a small confined space, I think enough of the light will come out to light up the button. But um, if not, I can try to track down some that are more traditional. These will just pop in like those came out. You'll just wanna get them lined up. And that plastic on those is pretty soft. So that screwdriver is not getting a very good hold on that before it starts to strip. So I'll just use my needle nose to gently turn it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just have to basically hope that everything's connected correctly and test it all out in the car before we fully install it. I did go ahead and put blue in the um, uh, circulation switch and the AC button, which not that the AC works in my car, but at least I know the light's gonna be new. I went ahead and put red in the hazard and I put white in the uh, illumination adjustment. So, and of course white for all the, um, the ones that go inside the, the, the gauge. The rest of these actually went in easier. This first one was just a little bit snug, but I didn't have any issues, have to use pliers or anything on the other Neo bulbs. And again, it looks like two of them I pulled out were orange and one's red. And I think the other one that I already pulled out was also red. So I think all the illumination in the dash was generally red. Um, so I'm changing some of it to white, some of it to blue and things that are red or whatever I'm keeping red. So now we can go ahead and I think reassemble everything. I'll probably go ahead and put the, uh, the dimmer uh, back together because it's kind of all taken apart right now. And then the rest of everything else can go kind of get snapped back into here and then we can get it back into the main housing. Let me get all this put back together and then I'll, uh, I'll start working on the actual bezel itself. I have everything that needs to go back together um, with this assembly as much as it can be done without getting the actual bezel itself cleaned up and Like I mentioned probably when I took this apart The little clip little spring kind of plastic clip that holds the uh, dimmer switch in is broken on the bottom of mine and I can pop it in there And for the most part it stays now it can rock back and forth a little bit and it might be a little bit loose and make noises. One thought I had was that I could just put this in, maybe get some double-sided like foam tape and just set this back in there so that at least it takes up the gap that would cause it to kind of rock back and forth. You know, I really have to take this all apart to get this out anyway, so it's probably not a big deal. It's not much of a gap where this clips in. So I'll probably just find some double-sided 3M tape that you'd use to stick on like a, a body panel or something and then just put that there and that'll give it just enough um, resistance so that it doesn't want to rock back and forth. So I'll deal with that when I go to put that back in. I do need to go ahead and get this cleaned up. There's lots of discussions about these online, about what to do. Some people just say, sand it off. Some people say use acetone. Some people say this, say that, whatever. I did do a little small test sample right here. I don't know if the camera will pick it up so well. I did take a little bit of goof off product um, and just kind of let it sit there for a second and wiped it off. And that seemed to almost immediately take the, the rubberized coating off. Uh, I may do a small test area with some acetone just to see, but I do know from my experience with other plastics that the, if you let that acetone sit on there too long, it will eat the plastic. So I'll, I'll look at that and see what's the best option. And of course I've got some tricky areas because of all the little um, you know numbers and letters and gauges and stuff. And like I said, it if it wasn't glued on, I would feel much better about popping these out, but I think I'd be taking too big of a risk of these breaking, trying to pull those out. I could probably use a heat gun and maybe try to loosen that. I think I'll just try to be careful not to get any cleaner on these. And then when I go to paint it, I'll just have to be really careful and apply um, tape and stuff in these areas and, and, and tape it off really well. I'll go ahead and do a couple little tests with a couple of the different cleaners that I've got and see which one kind of works the best without damaging the plastic. I'll show you the results and what, what I'm going to end up using and then I'll go ahead and try to get all this uh, rubberized coating off of this bezel. Because I know the goof off 
product um, actually did a really good job. I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the acetone and I'll just go ahead and rub this kind of on this corner. And yeah, it's, it's, it's coming off quite quickly as well. But again, it's getting down into the plastic. I would think if you're quick enough, you could kind of just take quick passes. So I don't know how well the camera will pick that up. So it definitely works. It, it takes it right off. If you move quick enough, I don't think it's gonna do any damage to the plastic, though I do see some streaking from um, the acetone. So I'll do another, a larger test area with the goof off and see if that creates you know similar issues with the plastic. But it looks like either of these methods or either, either of these products will take that coating off. But I'll go ahead and try some more of the goof off and see if I have any issues with the plastic. Admittedly, Goof Off is actually one of my favorite household products. It, I, I find so many uses for this around the house and in the automotive um, stuff because it just seems to eat up just about everything and it's not too corrosive, I guess, to where it eats up a lot of plastics. But, you know, like I said, this is, this is definitely taking that coating off. Kind of hard to tell. It's probably eating into the plastic a little bit, but nowhere near like what the acetone is. So I'll go ahead and use this rest of this goof off and try to get as much of this coating off as I can. I would definitely shy away from using the acetone. I did go back over and do another spot. And if you sit there for any amount of time, it will start to, to eat the plastic. I don't know if that texture will show up very well on the camera um, right there, but uh, I did wipe it down as good as I could. I started getting a little gun shy when I got up here around these little plastic, um, like the gauges. I was afraid if I got any of the, chem the goof off down in there that it would eat that plastic and I wouldn't be able to clean it out very well. I did wipe everything down really well with the goof off and then I did stick it in the sink and wipe it down with a 500 grit pad. You know, when I used a 500 grit uh, pad like this. I do have some deeper scratches that might be worth going ahead and doing some um, some plastic filler and trying to get that smoothed out. But what I might do is after I've sanded it, you know, they, you can I can feel them, but they're not terrible. So it might be something that we could do a couple heavy coats of primer, sand that down, and that'll help fill, you know, get like a thick high build primer, let that fill in, fill in a lot of these little scratches and areas. And then when we go to paint it, it you won't really notice it at all. I'm gonna get my sand pad out and I'm gonna keep sanding on this. And then I'll be back whenever we're ready to get, uh, get some of these repairs made. All right, guys, I know this video has been rambling on and I know I've been talking a ton, but it's really worth going into the details for anybody that's gonna be doing this themselves in the future. In the next video, I'll probably go through all the little repairs I had to do to get that center bezel, um, you know, basically back to new looking and then probably go ahead and consider painting it and maybe include all that in one video so that you can kind of see the final process. This first video is kind of covering the internals and then the second one will be kind of the external improvements of that panel. I'll actually go ahead and give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what the panel looks like. I'm really happy with the way it turned out and I probably saved myself maybe 100, 150 bucks doing this repair. And a lot of the repairs I did on this would be applicable to tr just about any of the other pieces of trim that are in the car. So stay tuned for the next video where I go through on how I actually made it look as good as it does now. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving and got to spend some time with your friends and family. And you got some great Black Friday deals on some car parts. Thank you guys for checking out my video. I really appreciate all your support. Please consider subscribing if you like this content and want to stay up to date with everything that's going on with the RX-7. Check me out on Instagram. I'll put all the links and all that stuff down below because I post there probably more up-to-date information than what you guys see here on YouTube. As always, I'll see you in the next one.